Hello. Good afternoon. This is David with Mudslinger Pottery, and I'm out here in the studio and I'm working on my bird feeders. Birdhouse, bird feeder. I kind of do the same shape. And then if I'm doing a birdhouse, maybe I'll just do one hole. But I feel like with the four holes, it's probably more like a bird feeder. I mean, it could obviously, obviously be used as a birdhouse too. So I put a couple uh, perches for them to get in and out, and then there's some birds that that don't like that, so I leave that off. So this is thrown in one piece, and I'm going to uh, attempt to uh, make one for you today. So let me get this positioned so you can see my pot here. Get the lighting right. Okay, so like I said, this is David with Mudslinger Pottery. I'm here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I am working on a bird feeder that is thrown in one piece. And when you're working on a piece that's, that's one piece, having it really well centered and keeping it centered is uh, really pretty important. That and uh, not having air bubbles is a big help too, which I think I always uh, wedge more air bubbles in than take out. So it's three pounds of clay. This clay is speckled brownstone, which is a high water clay out of Asheville, North Carolina. I'm fortunate enough that. Uh, here in Charlotte, we have a local supplier, Carolina Clay, and I can pick up my clay there. So whenever I'm making a pot, I consider the form of the pot, how I'm gonna finish it out, sometimes even how I'm gonna glaze it, although not so much. So these pots, uh, I do not want a foot on the bottom. So I don't wanna I don't want to foot, you know, that, that, that much clay in the bottom of my pot. So I like using the, uh, the needle tool to adjust exactly where I'm going to have the depth of my bottom. I'm not too proud to admit that I can't look down there and see that it's a half an inch or a quarter of an inch. So there again, it's still a little, still a little thick. And I don't, I don't need a lot on the bottom here, not for this birdhouse, and I'm not trimming the bottom. So if I leave a lot of clay on the bottom, I am just creating a bottom heavy pot. And I don't really want that. I want one that has a little better balance to it. So I'll keep checking this till I get it where I want it. That's still a little thick. Okay, that should be good. I take a red rib right here that you can't see that's red because it's so brown. These are the uh, mud tool ribs. And this works great to uh, smooth out the bottom, really compress it, help keep it from uh, cracking on me. Okay, so now I'm ready to throw. And once again, I'm thinking about what this form is gonna look like and how it's gonna finish out. So I'm gonna want this to come up and I'm gonna wanna close that top because this is, like I said, it's a one-piece thrown birdhouse or bird feeder, as the case may be. So when I pull, I am going to pull towards the center, try to keep it moving towards the center. The more I get it in the center, the easier it's going to be for me to uh, close it up at the end. So if I can keep it so it's just about like the size of my hand, maybe 
you know, so my, my hand fits down in there, that'll help me out a lot. And the other thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to, to keep this narrower, the whole pot, because I can stretch this clay out after I've got it thrown. get it to the shape I want. But I'm really trying to keep this thing centered. And thank goodness I don't feel any air bubbles. That's always a good thing. So I'm just moving this clay up right now. So I have an Instagram account which is Mudslinger Pottery. And I'm a lot more active on Instagram than I am on YouTube. So if you want to see some more of my work, some more of my pots, I'll do some uh, time-lapse videos, throw a little music behind them, announce whenever sales are coming up or what's going on with, the, with my pottery. But check me out, Instagram, Mudslinger Pottery. It was really kind of funny. I was using a Facebook page forever. and My daughter, who is an engineer, set me up for my birthday an Instagram account and said, Dad, you know, Facebook's pretty much dead. You need to start moving on to the next, uh, the next great social networking platform. And she was like, you know, your, your pottery would just be neat on Instagram because it's, you know, it's all photos. So it's been fun, I've really enjoyed it. Enjoyed playing with Instagram. And I've started to do a couple of these YouTube videos. I uh, hope to share some of the, the tips and the tricks that I've learned through the my 20 some years of making pots. And I was talking to someone else and she asked me, she says, why did you start a YouTube video? Why are you starting a YouTube channel? And I really got to thinking about it because I really wasn't thinking about it to begin with. And I mean, obviously I'm, I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna get a million views and you know, Google's gonna start calling me for, to put run ads on my videos and then all I've got to do is throw pots and make videos of them and watch the money roll in. Well, that takes a while. <laughs> so the money's not rolling in, but I'm having fun doing these. And the, the other thing I have to think about, you know, I'm creating a, I'm creating a legacy for my, my grandkids, great grandkids. They'll be able to say one day, they can go on YouTube and they can say, oh look, there's Grandpa David throwing a pot. You know, maybe I'll want to do that. But it'll be out there. It'll be for them to see. So I'm keeping this fairly narrow. And just raising this up. Thinning that clay out. And what I'll be able to do is stretch this clay out and uh, thin out the pot a little bit more. So I'm going to try to close this in a little bit. And what I'm doing is basically making three, three points. So I'm, I'm kind of holding my hands like this. And as I'm looking down on the pot, the clay looks like a triangle. You can't see that because of where the, the camera is. But if I just hold it there and slowly raise up to the top, the clay catches up to itself. And like right now, it's running in a circle, but it's closed in a little, little more than, than it was. So before I get too far here, I want to do a couple decorative type things here. Number one, I have a, a hard piece of plastic that I've used a drill bit, cut a hole in there. And I use that for the foot of my pot. So I can just take that and just 
stick it on the edge, the bottom edge here, and it creates this nice round foot that gives me a spot where I will glaze to. My second trick is a stiff metal rib. This is a stainless steel rib. I make these and I sell them in my Etsy shop. My Etsy shop is Mudslinger Pottery DAC. So if you ever had an old wooden rib, which most of the people use, I don't know if you can see it, but at one point this used to come into a it used to come into a point like this, and now it doesn't. It's it's kind of flat. So you've got to be careful which side of the wood you use on it to make sure you're you're using that edge. That's going to keep an edge. It keeps a really thin edge and it's going to be there for a long, long time. So I don't have that issue where that clay is or that that wooden rib is moving on me or getting sanded off not with these metal ribs. So I'm using this metal rib and it basically trims the pot while I'm throwing it. So I'm using it to shape it, get some of this water off of here, and form this pot. Because I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to add some more water here to this so that I can close the pot in. I don't want too much on there. So I'm going to shape this out a little bit, which will thin the clay out down the bottom here, give me the shape that I want. And because I'm using this metal rib, I am kind of trimming that clay off and getting some of this water off the side of my pot, which stiffens it up so it'll hold up and stand up better. Okay. And while I can still get my hand in here, I'm going to get the water out from in there. And I'm going to form it one more time here. I'm liking this shape. force that top in a little bit. Okay, so now is where it gets tricky. So, like I said, this is a uh, one-piece pot. The roof is uh, thrown with it. So what I have to do is I have to close this top up. And what I do is I, I get my hands really wet and I'm basically three or four positions on the, on the pot. Get it a little wet. And then I'm just gonna squeeze it and very slowly force my hands up. And once again, I don't know if you can see it, but the top of the pot is basically a triangle right now. As I gently squeeze it and push it. But if I just kind of stick with it and hold it there, it will get back into round because it's gonna force it into that round, that round shape. And as it does, narrows in the top but the other thing it's doing just like I when I move this out that clay is thinning out so as I'm moving it in I'm thickening up that clay so now this this part of the pot is getting thicker so I have to keep moving this clay and thinning it out and pulling it up and basically what I'm doing is pulling it up and in towards the center. Just to thin that clay out. I'm using the heel of my hand to kind of force that in right through here. I'm, I'm using that to, to push in too. 
because if you if you push it too much too quickly it'll start twisting on you especially when the clay one part of the clay is a little thicker than the other part the clay will develop a twist so I just keep moving this in and I've got my triangle right here and if I just hold it for a while that clay will force back in get a little closer get a little tighter narrow up the hole and it'll get back to round and it'll be smaller so the other thing I can do is take that I've just dropped on the ground here. And I can use this red rib to clean up some of the water. And if it gets too wet in here, this thing's gonna drop. So this way I'm cleaning up some of the water and forcing that clay in. You can see how I'm kind of moving that clay in. Also getting some of that water off of there. Okay. Once again, narrow it down. Narrow it down. It's really closing in now. said this is this is thickening up up here so I can take that and push that in a little bit and, and narrow it down like that so I'm about to the point where I'm pretty close to closing out the top of this but I don't want to close out the top yet let me get this out of here piece of clay out of there okay so I want to shape the pot, I want to create the, the roof of my birdhouse. So what I'm going to do is just come in here and come up and then just squeeze in and kind of create this shape a little bit. Just by pushing in. So I'm kind of creating that roof. And then I can come down here and I can stretch that clay out a little bit this way too. So it looks like a roof line. Stretch this clay in, close this thing out. It's getting narrower and narrower. It's right about the size of my finger right now. not quite the shape I was going for. So I'm going to fix this up a little bit. Make it look a little more like a roof. I'm going to create a knob here on the top too. So it's getting there. I'm going to pull this in, close this thing out, and keep some of this clay up top. Do one more here. Close this up. closed now so if I push on one side the air is going to force it to go to the other side so right now I can shape it kind of any way I want create a little better knob here get the 
shape I want. So sometimes I just leave the knob like that and I'll run a hole through there. And that is uh, what I'll do. And then the last couple I did, I uh, added a ball on top because I didn't have as much clay right there. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. That's it. And I finished this out with uh, kind of a thatched roof. At least it'll look more like a roof. Get some of this clay out of here. Touch this up again. And I love how this, what this does. And this is just a flexible metal rib that has a serrated edge. creates that roof and then my glazes will pull in there and it'll uh, add a little variety to it and just uh, just look a little better which is what we're all after here right making pretty pots so yeah that one came out really good I like that shape and I uh, touched my foot here a little bit so I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit with my little foot tool and then tomorrow I'll come in and cut four holes put a couple little uh, perches on there and I'll have another bird feeder These are one of the more challenging forms I make. But when they come out and they're done, they really are a, a neat looking pot. So there it is. This has been David with Mudslinger Pottery here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I hope you can uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, maybe check out some other videos. I've, I've got some other tips and ideas and things to help the uh, the beginning potter maybe make a little better pots so fuss with your pots make them right follow me on instagram mudslinger pottery check out a metal rib they're great tools they'll last forever twenty dollars in my etsy shop at mudslinger pottery dac so hope everyone has a wonderful day hope you get to go play in the clay today so thanks a lot for watching and have a good day